Hey everybody, Brittany here. Welcome back to another King's Indian Attack speedrun video. We're playing against Knight C6, so this will be interesting. Will they play into some sort of perk? We'll find out. Hmm, Knight C6. I think their idea was that they want to go into an E45 opening. Sorry guys, I would, I would totally do that, but uh, that's not that's not our repertoire. So we're not doing that. All right. So, uh, bishop g2. Now I'm looking at castling. Let's castle. And now we're ready for c4. Where will they put their bishop, however? Either bishop. Bishop d6, bishop e6. If bishop e6, I'm much less likely to play c4, of course. I can still play e4 in those types of positions. So they go there. Hmm. So if they go there, c4 takes, takes. If they end up trading queens, does this pawn ever hang? I'm not sure. Knight c3 is kind of funny. If they play d4. Then I could go back, but again, I've got some comments that I shouldn't really do things like that. It's bad behavior. So, let's play either c3 or bishop g5. Hmm. Sorry, I'm spending a lot of time here. I want to I want to make more principled moves. Things that get people a little bit less upset with me. Let's play knight bd2 and go for c4. This is healthy. E4 I'm not really concerned about. We can take that. And go like knight to g5. If they end up playing a3 with the sacrifice in mind, this time I'm not going to really worry about it. Okay, so they're going for it. I think this is our first time actually seeing this play out, which is interesting. Um, is there any other move here? Probably not. All right. So let's take. So there's knight to g5. Is there any other move? If they end up taking with the knight, that'd be a huge mistake, I think. Then we can consider taking. I don't even think we need to there. Let's just attack the pawn again. Knight to g5. And, uh... Yeah, let's see this E3 stuff that I've been talking about for a long time. Uh, but it looks like this is our first time playing against it. This is something that I've always been a little concerned of uh, in these types of games. But, hey, if it doesn't work out for them, then that's all that matters. I gotta keep adjusting. Ugh. I always get like uncomfortable when I, when I sit too long. So it looks like we can take... I like throwing in c3 first. I don't know why. Do I need to? No. Do I want to? Yes. Yeah, let's, let's play c3. And then what I want to do here is I actually want to take... Like this. I want to take with the g5 knight. And then take with the bishop. And then move my bishop back. So here, huh. They actually have to take on d2 at the end of this. And I don't think that's correct. I'm going to take on b4 here. And then I'm going to take on d2 with the bishop. This feels incorrect. I think we've uh, been given a gift here. And we should um, savor that gift. 
as much as we can. All right. Um, let's play bishop c3. We're up a pawn. This is our extra pawn. The knight on g5 is now undefended. Will that matter? Maybe, maybe not. Let's find out. Okay, now it's probably not going to matter because nothing's attacking it anymore. Uh, the queen was indirectly attacking it. That's something I was a little worried about. Do I take on c6? This would give up my bishop that I love so much and so dearly. Instead, no. Let's just play e4 and go for space. Uh, I like taking this piece as well. Nothing wrong with that. Let's play f4, get more space, and I'm looking at moves like e5 even. But I won't play e5. f4 is mainly to prevent them from playing e5. Uh, and, you know, when we have the pawn on f4, it's sufficiently defended. Uh, and we don't really have to worry about any kingside weaknesses because how are they going to attack our king? That's a difficult question to answer. e5. Looks interesting. Um, so does a4. a4 has the not-so-subtle threat of just trying to play b5. I'm not really tempted to play e5 anymore because they have knight f5. So that would not be fun. If they go knight c4, their idea is knight e3. So I will just... Curve that by playing rook to d3. Hmm. Okay. Let's just defend our e4 pawn and bring our bishop to greener pastures. I would love to reroute it to b3, actually. It feels like b3 would be a really nice square for the piece. Um, if they end up playing b5, then I'll, I'll just push. I think pushing is the most appropriate. Uh, okay. Yep, let's keep going on with our maneuver. I could also consider e5 now, because if they ever play knight f5, I can take it. The thing is, I'm still not really too tempted to, because now they can take with the g pawn. Will it matter? Maybe not. I can play king f2, but I should definitely consider it. You never know. All right. Um, okay, so they want to go c5. So let's prevent c5. Right? That's how chess works. Whenever they try to do something, you prevent it. And I'm looking at rook c1. I have to be a little careful here that there's not some like discovery that just ends the game uh, in a move. But it looks like there isn't any. So because of that, I want to bring my king up to e3. If g5, king e3 anyways, e5, I take it. Knight c4, I take it. Yeah, looks good. King f2. I don't see any discovery that wins the game for them. They end up going knight f5. I just take it. They can take on d4 if they want to, but I, I win the g6 pawn as a result. So that would be really bad for them, I think. Getting the king to e3 looks solid. Defends these two bishops, which are very well placed. And then I'll bring a rook over to the c file. If they play c5, I do have to take with the bishop, I believe. Uh, but that's not really such a bad thing if we take with the bishop. Because, well, it would win a pawn. But we don't want to take with the pawn because then they can take this guy. It's still probably good for us, but, you know, you want to kind of think about things in that light. All right. Um, hmm. So they're going for this one variation, as mentioned. I could just ignore everything and go bishop a7.
But I don't think that's the right approach. Actually, maybe it is the right approach because I don't want them to get in anything on d4. Successfully, that is. So bishop a7, very strange move, but probably correct. Because now we're threatening the knight on f5. They have to defend it with knight to d4, which I'm assuming their, their idea is this, to play knight to d4. And then I'll just move my bishop back to b1. Okay, and if they go there, then I I can move my king up or I can play king e3. I like both moves. I'm just going to play uh, king e3 here. Everything's still defended extremely well. And uh, it feels like we've done nothing incorrectly at this point. Bishop on a7 can always come back to d4 now. Not really a concern. e5 is the perfect time. Knight f5, we, we just take it. And um, yeah, maybe like we're not in love with taking it, but I don't know. We're up a pawn, you know? Uh, bishop c5. If they take, we're again since we're up upon uh, this. This would be a mistake, I think. Yeah, they end up playing it. Interesting. Uh, my idea is to just go like b four, uh, and really try to push the fact that I'm up upon. Yeah, let's go b four. Will we end up winning this game? We'll have to find out. I don't think they have enough time to create any pressure. Now I think I have g4. I think I'm just in time with g4 at this exact moment in time. So let's play it. This is what you do when you're up a pawn. You use it. There we go. Now I have f5 coming. If they try rook g8, uh, then I think I go f5 here. I could also take on d8. Um, because that's not really a comfortable question to answer. If only they could take with check, but they can't. Um, yeah, let's go king f3. And then f5. We can wait a move or two. Doesn't really hurt us. If they go king e7, either f5 or rook d1. I also like rook d1 quite a bit because, hey, rook d1 just looks nice. Uh, we can bring it to d4 and actually just make our way up and try to win this h-pawn. Very slowly, but surely. Yeah, rook d1 check. There's absolutely no reason to rush here. Because it's not like they can do anything after rook to d4, right? Like, where where is their rook going? They have to play, like, rook g7 to d7 to get any activity. Or rook g6 to h6, but those moves aren't really playable yet. And now that their king is completely locked out of the game forever, uh, these pawns are just going to run. The f pawn and the e pawn, because I'm, I'm pushing f5 next move. So, we'll have to see what they do. Maybe rook f8 is a reasonable defending move. Doesn't look so bad. Yeah, I don't think that works, though. I think uh, f5 should be played and uh, should win the game. This h-pawn's too slow. Um, they can try what they want here, but... Yeah, I just don't think they're fast enough. Let's play f6. Let's go king g2. Huh. If e6, they take. What if I go up? They take, and I go up again. I gotta be careful here, but I think I'm still winning. 
Rook M things are hard. Oh my gosh, they're hard. Okay, so also rook e4, king d5, e6. If they take, push, rook e5, there's f7. This looks like it works, yes, e6. Boom. They take, e7. So this move doesn't work because I have e7 anyways. Um, they can take, but then I promote. This got unnecessarily complicated. We are winning though. So I'm gonna take that as as a win. Alright, cool. And as long as we don't like blunder rook g6 check or something somehow. Like if uh, if I go like queen g8, that would be a huge mistake. Um Okay, looks like we're winning this h7 pawn, actually. That's a big deal. That makes things a lot easier. Let's see what they do. King e6. I'll end up taking the pawn. This is the nice part about being a queen versus a rook. In this position, there's no checks, uh, and it doesn't even matter if there were. The only thing we gotta watch out for is any any of those weird tactics that can sometimes occur. Definitely can. Do I take the free pawn, or do I try queen h5 check just to see what they do? Because queen h5 check, if they go king c4, then queen h4 wins the rook. Let's try it. Check. King c4, queen h4 check wins the rook. If they go king c6, then queen e5. Yeah, so queen h4 check will win this rook now, which is nice. Um, and that should win the game. I'm just going to win this guy. And they resign. Uh, surprisingly, no mistakes, no blunders, which is great. Uh, that rook ending was pretty difficult, though. So again, yeah, we got we ran into the situation where uh, you never know if this e3 stuff's going to be annoying. So we do have enough compensation, uh, or they they do have enough compensation for the pawn after f takes e3. Like uh, this is our extra pawn, right? <laughs> but you know they have a lot of ways they can start attacking it like bishop c5. They don't even have to attack it. They can just leave things as they are um, for a while and get a good position because of it. Uh, so yeah, bishop to b4 was definitely a mistake because now after e3, uh, these like were just off a pawn and uh, this is our extra pawn instead of having double isolated pawns. This is a much, much more different situation. I'm wondering again what we should have done in the opening because I I keep facing slightly different variations and then thinking hey I I don't know what I should do. So let's think here. So uh, objectively against something like knight c6 we should play something like d4 here. Um, if we play d4 or even e4 then we're fine. But again that's kind of out of the repertoire. Um, so I don't know if we have a choice. Castles, bishop to g4 here. Funnily enough, one of the options is d4, which is kind of kind of strange. h3 is fine, but knight bd2, not as great. Uh, it looks like this is probably one of the better options for us uh, in this line. So as long as we are very, very, very like, you know, we we don't allow them any chance to just go into a normal opening. Against knight c6, that's kind of like our weakest point in the repertoire. Uh, and, and that's because we're trying to be stubborn. You don't have to be. I totally recommend if someone plays uh, knight c6 against you, just play d4. And you'll get a lot of openings where... Again, you're just playing a d4 opening where they play knight c6, which is a little strange. So maybe next time 
what we'll do is next time someone plays a one knight c6 against us, we'll transpose into a d4 opening um, or an e4 opening, depending on kind of how we're feeling about things. But yeah, we'll have to we'll have to change our setup if we want to try to go for more of an advantage because we can get something that's a, a tenable advantage against one knight c6. Um, and uh, we're just choosing not to because we're trying to be a bit more. Um, we're trying to follow the like the first bunch of moves uh, to the T. Anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed that uh, video. I think that's that's mainly all we gotta cover. Like uh, at, at this point, it is just completely winning. So uh, not really too much there to cover maybe the one thing we could have done is done a better job to open things up if we open things up while being up upon and having the bishop pair then i think that offers us more chances like here i think something i don't even know if f5 works maybe not but i guess e5 uh probably should have been played at this point Knight f5 um maybe even take on c6 or something this looks very very good um as well but hey we still got a pretty good position the way we played, uh, it did take a little bit of accuracy at the end there, but, uh, you know, a win is a win. So as long as it's winning and, and we didn't lose our win, that's that's what matters. Accuracy is like, obviously, we want to have as much room as we want, we can, right? So we want to be able to have the opportunity to be a little inaccurate and still be okay. Because if you need to be extremely accurate, um, I mean, sometimes there's lines like that where you, you can be winning, but you have to be extremely accurate. I mean, you're still winning, so you know uh, you should you should still be happy about that. But hey, if if there's like two two ways to win, take the one where there's more room for error. But that's just my opinion. Anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.